go to Dayton next year, boys. Figure it out. Well, KJ4YZI here in the truck heading to where are we going, guys? Desert Inn first. Turn the camera around here. There's me, KJ4YZI. There's John, MCK. Hello, John. Hi. Craig in the back. Hello. So we're going where, Craig? Tell us. Desert Inn first. Uh, the tour director, Jan, KK4GGJ, has set us up uh, lunch out there. And we're going to Okeechobee to visit WRMI, I believe it is. What is RMI? It's a uh, 1.4 million watt shortwave station, I believe. Never been there. I've never uh, been there either. Just read about it and what uh, Jim Davis, W2JKD, has told us about it. Uh, 24 different shortwave antennas, I believe. So I'm looking forward to it. Wow. John, are you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> I actually, uh, today is VHF contest weekend starting, I think, at 2. I made John get me a radio in case six meter opens. I'm heading to Yeehaw Junction right now. If you've never, bumpy ride, but if you've never been to Yeehaw Junction, there's really not a lot there except, I guess, Desert Inn. Uh, straight out west from Vero Beach. And uh, so I'm wanting to see this 1.4 megawatt. Is that right, Craig? Yeah. 1.4 megawatt shortwave station on the ride. We got D Star and all kinds of digital modes in here today. So uh, staying in communication. And uh, we will give you a tour of the place. Check it out. And then uh, when I get back home, I'm going to hopefully check out some more six meter with the new Yagi and hopefully the contest on two meter and six meter sideband is wide open. So let's go get something to eat. So I stopped at the Desert Inn for a bite to eat out of Yeehaw Junction, famous for their burgers, built in the trading post in the 1880s. It used to be a brothel upstairs. And only if these walls can talk. Um, but uh, this is about the biggest thing out here, except the traffic light. So, uh, <laughs> and the pet chicken. Where did the chicken go? There's the chicken. Let's go and get something to eat. Are they nice now? Yeah, you're fixing them up nice. Well, as nice as we can. I mean, it's dated and it's meant to be that way. I right, don't know right. what the historic site is going to do with them. Yeah, they might make you guys keep it the way it hmm. was. That's how they get the fungus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Well, it's a historical site. So it makes the, uh, what do you call it? Registry. Right. It's meant to be the way it is. So they can bring it back in time when they can progressive yeah, except for upgrades and yeah yeah that's it exactly. so you they own the building but you own the business yes that was whatever the restaurant the motel i love i love the chicken <laughs> yeah we might be getting close watch the slow moving tractor up there it looks like Oh, we're on the way. Got about 10 miles to go down in the middle. I forgot to bring my hair. <laughs> Got a little in the middle of nowhere. What's the station again, Jay, uh, Craig? WRMI. WRMI. They should have just brought some fluorescent tubes just for fun. Freak everybody out. All right, so showing up here at WRMI. One square mile of shortwave antennas. 1.4 million watts of power between 14 transmitters. We're gonna go inside here. One square mile of antennas with a bunch of rhombics, like this one here. Uh, the amount of wires on this property are just impressive. You gotta really be here to kinda of understand or get that feeling on what it's like to see all these antennas and towers and wires and stuff, even just the way this rhombic right here is, or uh, antennas. It's just amazing. Let's go uh, check out the front and get inside. Uh oh. So this is where the power comes in? Yeah, this is for the southern bulb. Huh. This is, you can see 11 through 14. And we have a, a space there Sorry. for 15, but we never built it. We were, at one time, we were planning on building it, but the fellow who was designing it died. Mm -hmm. He came in here, he had a pacemaker, but he was coming up his side and said, is this okay? You're coming with a pacemaker. Turns out, I don't think it was. 
<laughs> because yeah. um, didn't live very long after that. No, right? we lived like six months, and then you know, I always wondered if we did damage to the pacemaker. You know, is this you can take headphones and touch it around any metal in here and hear sound. So this all is microcurrent, but it still has current going through. Static electricity. We burnt out rechargeable flashlights, what, what have you, electronic equipment in here. And we're standing here listening to him, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's say by the way to your flashlight. This is inside the control room here. Here on this end, let's see. Uh, this is our um, frequency. This samples each of the frequencies and sees how long we're. Our the PTS, as Port Harry was pointing out earlier, is very accurate because we're down to 0.1 uh, frequency uh, deviation for each of our uh, transmitters, which is very low. So we stay right on the money, which is what the FCC likes, because if we start wandering off and start drifting around, we get a phone call from them and say, hey, such and such, is you're drifting into their frequency, they don't like that. Yeah. We need part, I mean, know where to come now. Yeah. Like you want it? Every day. So much for Skycraft or whatever that really exists. <laughs> <laughs> this will be our next field. This is like very right. close. Yeah. That breeze feels good. That is a PA tube which is cooled by water. The steam goes up out the building, recycles like a distillery to keep the PA tube. That thing's huge. It's like a five gallon bucket or larger. Man, look at this. You gotta know what you're doing if you're in here working on this thing. Look at this. But wait, there's more. How many watts is this, Jim? Uh, According to the magic sign up here, it's 10,000 watts. Well, let me put that in, in terms you'll understand. It's 10,000 watts of power. <laughs> Man, how do you even start troubleshooting in something like this? Yeah, very carefully. Yeah. Look, wow, look at the transformer. Yeah. yeah. Throw yeah. a wrench in there usually. I think that fuse is bad. <laughs> uh, you know what that's for there? Yeah, that's called the Jesus stick. Yep. This is known as the Jesus oh, stick. Oh, I've heard about this Jesus yeah, stick. Yeah, the Jesus stick is after you turn off the power, then you go and and if anything goes snap, you go, Jesus. <laughs> Somebody could always dial 911. But now, no. So my limit is open the door, look inside. If I don't see the problem, close the door, make a telephone call, yeah. get somebody out here. Because even if the transmitter is off and you, you pull the disconnect so that it's not connected to the 440 coming in, you can still do some stupid things, right. you know, mechanically, you know, bump something, uh, you know, it, it just... So, my, my rule is, if somebody's here that can dial 911, I'll go in and I'll, I'll do stuff. But if there's nobody here to, 
to dial 911. Harry, what are the, uh, what's the frequency range of these transmitters? I know that you move them up and down the dial. Anywhere okay. from 5 to 21 megahertz. Now, will each one of the transmitters tune from 5 to 21, or do certain groups turn various frequencies? These transmitters will go from 5 to 21. Uh, and they're motorized tuning? Yes. Now, uh, the other a uh, couple of transmitters are, are fixed and to change frequencies we have to change some coils or capacitors or that kind of stuff so you try to keep those so, on the same frequency and we try to keep these on the same frequency yeah. uh, we used to when family when uh, family radio ran this place everything changed frequency at least once a day sometimes three and four times a day yeah. wow uh, it, it, because yeah, the it was, it was the a hassle. The propagation would change, and especially if you have to if you have to crack. Yeah. And the the weirdest thing on one and two, it would be on a high frequency. In one hour, it would go down to a low frequency, big crack. You know, next hour go back up to high frequency, big yeah. crack. Yeah. No, we don't do that anymore. Jeff has this so that. All these transmitters are on one frequency, one antenna, so we don't move anything unless something goes down and we have to put that programming on another transmitter, then we will. And we've got to, we've got to tune it up. Uh, of course, we've, we've got the cards, the cheater cards. Uh, for each frequency or close to it. We have the numbers that you will get in the windows here for all of the all of the adjustments so we can get close. Sometimes we can't even get to the exact same frequency. But getting close, then we can tune the IPA. You know, you, you tune for a peak grid current and then uh, B to you tune tune for grid, low you tune for maximum forward power. No. Some people tune for max uh, for uh, a particular output current. I go for maximum power. It should go for it should be maximum power as you tune each of these. And the the ballon and the filter minimum we tune those for minimum reflected uh, power. That's, that's, a, that's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one, all right. Man. What's all that? Another transformer put in. How much does that weigh? I don't know. And I'm not going <laughs> to try to find out. I know the little ones in amplifiers sometimes weigh a good pen, a good bit, and this I can't imagine that you'd have to have a forklift to pick it up. Oh, yeah. Well, we've, we've got the, the hydraulic stuff around here. Lifts and... and uh, that kind of stuff, source pickers. Every everything was everything was built here, so they bought they bought the equipment to put it in, to put it in place. And you say that this one doesn't use a single. This is the wave of the future for shortwave transmitters. This right here. This can run a, a, a digital. This one is capable of running digital through it. So, like, how many watts is that putting on? Oh, I'd have to go look on the front, but I think it's probably like 40 or 50. And it's very complicated, unlike the other ones, which are simple. You turn the key, you give it right in. This one, you have to turn the key, set it, hit a switch, come over here, turn this switch, throw this handle, turn the key at the precise time, switch the key over to here. Oh, what a 40 second delay, don't forget that. And then, you, then when you do all of this, only then can you get into the transmitter. Or you can just use a little piece of copper we have and we slip it into the lock and we open the door. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Well, that's, uh, well, you're not getting into this unless you really want to.
So Craig says this is the giant tuner for this transmitter, like chain driven. It goes up to the ballon. This is over there. Another 10 by 15 feet ballon. You viewers that have a ballon on your antenna that's like small as your hand, look at the size of that one. Think of one thing, I don't want to be around when a fire goes off. That is a ballon there. So here's where the wires come out on the other side of the ballon, out to the huge antenna farm out here. Wires, wires, one square mile property. Antenna switches there on those wooden racks there and those switch between the various antennas, he said. Right there. And if my camera can allow it, as far as you can see, a square mile, there's just antennas all the way out to the edge of that square mile. neutralization capacitor in the IPA which is only 4,000 volts and he was kneeling down and he, he managed to touch something and 4,000 volts went out through his knees mm. bad news mm -hmm. how many antennas are on the property there are 22 antennas on the property we have 21 of them at the moment uh, one way over in that corner has a problem and it's had a problem for a while and uh, we're not using it. 80, 87 degree antenna. So it would face 87 degrees, it would face towards Europe. North Africa. North Africa, okay. Yeah. How many miles of wire do you think are out here? Oh. <laughs> Nobody even I don't know. The property is one square mile. Huh. And we are smack dab in the middle of it. Yeah. And they use every bit of it. Oh yeah. And, and uh, you know, uh, Bass, who owns the property, is, is very happy because he can run his cows under here and they graze and they're not phased in the least by the RF. How do you know? They don't tell you? <laughs> no pun intended. They've been there for years. <laughs> no problem. This is one of our switches uh, that you've seen outside on one of the platforms. We originally constructed it. We used Delron, which caught fire and burned down our, our switch. So we decided to switch that out, on this, get rid of that material. So now all of this is relatively non-flammable. I'm not going to say it's totally non-flammable. When you're dealing with that kind of power, it can and even though these things are sealed up inside with a motor inside of this, we regularly get wildlife and, and dirt and so forth. So we have to strip them down, clean them out. And you'll notice a lot here in this finger stock. The finger stock in here that switches in can burn up. We've actually had that just melt right off from the power. Now that's a transformer. There's some other ones. You thought the transformer in your uh, FL2100B amplifier or Heath kit was big? Look at these transformers. Imagine picking that thing up. Jeez. A flux capacitor. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, this next to it is the uh, that's the fallopian tube, and, uh, and that's uh, connected. And actually, it, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's designed to operate in this position, uh, uh, like this. Uh, as you can see, it's designed 
uh, to fit together very, uh, very well. Yeah. I so see. Uh, there, and, and this, by the way, is a requirement for all. This, if you want to produce 100,000 watts of power, you darn well better have a lot of these. Go. Hey, you know what these look like? These look like little. Um, I mean, amp I know the amplifiers, but they look like small, like. Uh, they are small. You know, like like I had an amp that had a couple MRF 455s in it. It kind of looked like this. What would they What would they use this for? Uh, I mean, I'm guessing that these are low level exciters. Exciters. In other words, they would. Uh, you start off with typically very low power. You know, all of these transmitters start off with probably 100 watts. Right. And then there's probably a bunch of these that build it up to a thousand watts, and then there's a Another one of those that builds it up to maybe 10,000 watts, I'm and then the final amplifier that's 100,000 watts. I'm so. sure you can repurpose these probably for uh, I would amateur guess. band. Huh? I see them, yes, absolutely. Uh, CQ, CQ, I, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> Latest DMR technology, what do you think? Yeah, <laughs> looks good. <laughs> Whatever, Jim. This is the dunce cap. If you're bad, you have to spend all day long with this it's on your head. It's like Tom Tom <laughs> That uh, is a battery backup. Mostly for the computer. Gotcha. What's your runtime on it? Well, that's your four seconds. Dan, what did you think of our tour? Tell me, tell me, tell me something about antennas that you know. Well, I had no idea how they get the signal from the middle of Central Florida to anywhere around the globe that they want. So what they do is they turn on and off a different arrays of rhombics outside, shoot the signal up into the ionosphere and to come down and go up and down like a sawtooth blade to get to where they want to go. Instead of that, we're trying to get a low angle of radiation and just shoot it out and, and angle it, our weaker signal, into the ionosphere. But they don't work that way because they have a million watts to play. Yeah, and I was looking, I was looking here, so... The, uh, oh yeah. Yes, so he, he yeah. Knew about it. You're up South America, so I was wondering. I guess those are just just the transmitters that they uh, for different programming. But like you said, they could put it in the ionosphere and pick where they want to put it. They said that they check the propagation by a service and that they shoot the signals only where the customer wants them. So when the customer rents time from a WRMI, they check and they adjust the station to shoot the signal to where they want it, and then they check at the location by a, some kind of special paid service with audio sampling back to here to make sure the signals are getting there. Cool, man. WRMI. Uh, 1.4 million watts total. That's 14 transmitters at 100,000 uh, transmitter. This was rebuilt by a local ham. It's a 1KW that is currently transmitting right now. Who knows where? Wow. Eric, uh, tell me what. Just tell me one thing you learned in there. What what impressed you the most? Uh, the, I guess the final output transmitter sections. Big tube the, with the water cool. With the water cooling. Yeah. That yeah. Was cool. And uh, ballon, everything all. The 10 by 15 foot ballon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's very some very interesting to see. Jim, what do you what now? Now listen, you, you know a lot about this stuff. This is everybody knows Jim Davis on the channel, but I can't imagine you learned anything today. So tell me something that impressed you on this tour. Well, first of all, Eric, um, if you see HV on the side of the uh, the transmitter, that's not for happy velocity. That means <laughs> high voltage, high voltage. And uh, in fact, they have a lot of Spanish stations uh, on here, so that's high voltage. High and voltage, you, huh? you want to stay away from the high voltage because uh, it, uh, it can do things like uh, turn snakes to dust. So uh, <laughs> that's what I, uh, I learned to be very, I, oh, I learned the, the reason for the Jesus stick too. The Jesus uh, stick, yes, you showed us the Jesus stick. Right, stands. that's right, that's right. You touch the high voltage and it goes <laughs> and you go jesus <laughs> and that's the end of that but uh, this is pretty amazing great well, jim, tour jim thanks for uh hooking us up to get us in here happy and, uh, to be here eric i'm glad everybody got to see this. that is w2jkd that got us the tour so yes. i thank you jim and all right brother thanks you too great to be here wow.